I'm just going to roll with it. Recording. Sync. Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. And this week, we're going to have a real good time because we're going to talk about some more uh, cable management and just some uh, some fun little tips and tricks uh, of things that I was able to do this past week at a summer camp we were at. Uh, well, I guess it wasn't summer camp, but winter camp, a youth camp. We were doing a camp, and uh, we were doing things with reels of cables. So, hopping right into it. A few things that I bought or made this week that I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm going to put the items in the description of this video um, for either the things you can buy or if you're going to make your own, where you can go do them. Um, These are all really practical things, really practical. Um, So one, uh, if you're using Velcro or tape or if you're not using anything to... um, Keep your cables tidy when you throw them in a bin or whatever. Uh, this is a very useful, cheap trick for you. This is a reusable, yes, reusable zip tie from Monoprice. That's what the fancy people call it. The uh, non-fancy people call it Monoprice. But fancy people call it Monoprice because I'm fancy, dang it. So you can use it. You can... Make that fun sound, and then you can click on this little tab here and uh, and unuse it. The reason why I like these is uh, they're cheap, they're really strong, and you can easily put a bunch of them together if you've got a really big cable. Um, so like that one that hung up a moment ago, uh, that's 150 feet of RJ45, Ethercon, Cat6, all those terms. Um, and so if I didn't have it on a reel, I could use this, two of these, and tie it up. So very, very useful, Monoprice reusable zip ties. Well, I have found that not all reusable zip ties are made the same. Um, these are really good, really good. But some of the other ones um, have a hard time unlatching. So go with the, the Monoprice ones, you'll be, you'll be happy. <clears throat> So one thing that we did this week that I thought went really well, really well, is um, we were setting up on the floor of this Baptist church in South Carolina, um, and we had a very helpful guy named Aaron. Aaron, if you can hear me, thanks for all your help, um, who was up in the balcony where the church's tech booth was. And uh, he was very helpful in running Center for us, Um, but there were a few videos that were happening in ProPresenter, and we needed to send audio from the balcony computer down to the floor where we had our uh, digital console set up. Rather than running a whole bunch of individual cables, I took this 150-foot Ethercon cable I have, popped off the ends um, so that uh, it's just an RJ45, and I made these little doodads. Um, It's a shielded ethernet um just an rj45 on one end and uh three and on this side female xlrs and then obviously i got another end here with three male xlrs and so we were able to take our single uh ethernet cable and chuck these guys on the ends and now we were able to send three completely independent signals um through that one cable. Now, you can buy something like this on Amazon. Um, The range of price varies depending on who makes it, Um, but you can get them pretty cheap now. Um, I I think I've seen them as cheap as $30 per connector. Obviously, you need two connectors, so 60 bucks for the pair. Um, Or if you're handy with a soldering iron, they don't have to look pretty. These obviously don't, Um, but they work, and, uh, and so you can make them for less than half that price if you feel comfortable doing so. Now, the ones you buy online usually have four connectors on there. You notice that mine have three. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to have uh, three completely independent uh, cables running. Um, And if you're using a shielded uh, Ethernet cable, you can do that with this one. Um, With the ones you buy online, you can do four, but you have to share... um, the uh, the ground pin across all four. And I, I don't have a problem with that, but I just wanted to have them all be separated. Um, and uh, so that's why I did it this way. So what we did was up at the balcony, <clears throat> 
we took two of these and two DIs and took the headphone jack out from the uh, the iMac that was running ProPresenter. So those are running down to my mixer so I can control the level of the video. Um, but using the third one, let's look at these little doodads here. And I made gender changing cables, Bruce gender changing. I might get in trouble for that, I don't care. Um, so I've got one with two female ends on it, hello. One with two male ends on it, hello. And I was able to convert one of these female connections into a male connector, and that allowed me to do something that's really helpful. If you're not doing this in your church, you should. Um, we were sending a headphone feed to Aaron, our uh, guy running ProPresenter, um, and that allowed him to be able to hear through the headphone amp what the music director was saying, um, what the um, guide tracks were saying in the, the track rig that we had. And that was just, you know, really helpful for, one, making sure that he was in the right place when he was firing different slides. And then, two, I think it helps you. That's kind of a, especially when you're up in the balcony and everyone else is on the floor, it helps you to bring that person into the team a little bit more. At least I hope that's how Aaron felt. Um, so it's a really good way to kind of unify what's happening on stage and what's happening back at that purpose or computer um, just by making a couple of these. Now, again, you can buy these on Amazon for about seven bucks a piece, but the ones that come on Amazon are going to be one solid connector. So just imagine this cable's not there. Um, so that kind of sticks pretty far out of your mixer or whatever it is you're plugging it into. So I prefer, again, if you can solder it all, these are pretty easy to make. Um, by making them with a cable, you just have some flexibility and you're less likely to break stuff when you plug these things in. Um, so those are really helpful. So again, we paired these <coughs> with these and then we were able to, uh, to send two lines of audio from the balcony, one line of audio up to the balcony, all off of one cable. So really cool, really cool. So speaking of reels, really cool. <coughs> Found this guy also on Amazon. Try to get the shot here. This was $10.33, not for the cable, just for the spool. I have bought these for portable churches before with mixed results, especially the orange ones. Um, me being cheap and always looking for a good deal, I found this guy for 10 bucks. And what's really cool about it, really cool, is if you notice, it's got a metal base the cylinder is plastic, but what's cool is the metal base is only connected to the cylinder on one side and not the other. The other ones that I've found for about $10 connect on both sides, and that becomes a problem when you do what I did here. So this is 150 feet of Cat 6. Um, I may not always need 150 feet. I may only need 100. I may only need 50. Um, so I don't want to have to unspool the entire cable to get to you know, both ends of the connectors. Uh, so what I did was I took these Monoprice Monoprice reusable zip ties. I coiled up about 10 feet of cable and made it the about the circumference of the, the spool here. Um, and I zip tied it to the outside and then the cable feeds into the rest of the spool and then I reeled up um, all the excess. Um, if you try and do that with the uh, ones that are connected on both sides, then this cable uh, or the connector, one or both, are going to be slapping against the, the brace every time you, you reel it over. Um, and that can start to uh, shear the cable and break it. Um, so it's just not very good. So by doing it this way with one that is not connected on this side, by attaching my cable here, I can reel it up not damage the cable, and then I can put 150 feet on here, and I think I could probably fit 200 foot on this spool and be fine if I really wanted to. Um, it's not the sturdiest thing in the world, uh, but it is definitely sturdy enough. It would work really well for a mobile church, uh, and you could even use it for a not mobile church. Um, you could use it for XLRs if you wanted to. Uh, when We haven't talked about cable management a whole lot on this show, as far as cable ties go, um, or sorry, cable wrapping. Um, but one thing that I hate is when people do the over the elbow wrap, 
that's a quick way to, at worst, damage your cable, at best, make it really, really ugly, really ugly. Um, so by using this instead, you can just you know say, okay, well, this is me for all of our 50 foot or 25 foot XLRs, put them on here, have a volunteer wrap it up on here instead of trying to do it incorrectly one way or another. Um, and even if you wrap cables correctly, you know, I, I, I wrap cables pretty well, I think. Um, but when you throw them in a bin and things happen, they get transported, they end up becoming cable spaghetti at some point. So having something like this, especially when it's $10 and 33 cents, I'm going to buy like four or five more of these and start putting all of our cables on these. Um, and, uh, and then not have to worry about volunteers screwing up the wrapping of our cables. Um, but definitely really useful for long cables like this, but there's no reason why you couldn't put your 25 footers on here as well. And, you know, like I said, you could probably wrap, I don't know, uh, probably at least eight or 10 25 foot cables on one of these things. And um, for 10 bucks, why not? So I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Again, all this stuff's gonna be on the description for the video. We got this cool cable spool here. Um, and then I'll put the, uh, the zip ties information on there. Uh, and then I'll put some of these just cheap XLR parts and that kind of stuff on there for you to see. Um, but yeah, hope that's been helpful for you guys. Until next time, have a really great week. Really great.